Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to share with you what looks sexy and especially what doesn't look sexy when you're dancing in the club. If you are excited for me to dive in, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notifications bell to be notified whenever I post a new video because if you want to learn how to dance better in social settings, this is the place to be. Maybe you're one of those people who tried learning how to dance in the past and it didn't work, or you simply avoid the dance floor, you're not comfortable dancing in social settings. Remember that I can help and I want you to stay tuned till the end of this video because I will tell you all about my online program and how you can learn from me with my unlimited feedback and my guidance. You can join thousands of students who learned with my method in the past 16 years. Students like, for example, Maki or Lynn, who went from looking like this to skilled social dancers in a matter of months. If you're interested in a similar transformation, stay tuned till the end of this video. I'll tell you all about how we can make it happen. First, let's talk about what doesn't look sexy. Number one mistake that I see, I see a lot of people make on the dance floor is messing up how the movement looks with your hands or your arms. So let me give you an example. Let's take a very smooth, popular movement, figure eight, and I'm going to include a tutorial for you below this video if you want to learn this one. Uh, we're just going to roll the hips and then let me show you how I can easily mess up the look of this move if I do something weird with my hands. Option one. Does it still look good? No. Or holding hands. Or arms down, stiff right? This doesn't look good. So even though my hips move nice and sexy and smooth, it just doesn't look good. Always think of the arms as the extension of the movement that you're doing. They only need to complement whatever else you're doing, let's say with the hips or with the feet or with the torso, meaning they shouldn't get in the way. When somebody's watching you dance, arms shouldn't be the first thing they notice. So I can keep the arms loosely bent by my sides, let them kind of move with the body, I'm not doing anything specific, I'm not even thinking about them, but they have to be loose. I'm not tensing them, because that doesn't look good either. So keeping them loose or having them on the thighs, this is like a safe option, or because the figure eight is a smooth continuous movement, I can be smoothly moving the arms in like a slow motion, raising them up, slowly bringing them down. You can do it up the body, meaning you touch the body as you do it, or just in front of you, whatever feels more comfortable. But that looks more sexy than this, any day. Number two, what will make you look not sexy when you're dancing in front of other people is huge moves. So if we take, for example, a very common one, very popular one, hip roll. It's not about how big you can make it. It's not about how big your range of motion is. That doesn't look good, period. Or like a body roll. This never looks good on the dance floor. And I've seen a lot of people striving to do those very noticeable movements. No, let's stop doing that. Hip roll, it looks so much better when it's connected, flowing, I don't know, smooth, feminine but small. <laughs> this will look better than this. If you create big movements, it shows that you don't have body control. You don't know what the size of the movement is happening. But you can say, okay, but when I'm dancing in the club, let's say, I don't see the size of the movement. I don't see how big I'm making them. Simple solution. Let's say you start a movement. Just know that usually we make them bigger when we start, right? Because that's what we're used to. What you want to do is after, let's say, the first or first two hip rolls, make it your goal to make the movement smaller. Just consciously think about it. Remember to make it smaller. You don't have to see it. You will feel the difference. Uh, so I encourage you to try to do that with any, any movement that you're doing on the dance floor. The first one or the first two may be not so great, but it is important that you catch yourself and you make that correction so that your freestyle looks great. Number three, what doesn't look sexy is movements that are taken out of context. They are not connected because 
what you have to realize, it's not about the movement that makes you look good on the dance floor. It's not about what moves you're doing. It's not about uh, how many moves you can fit into one song. It's how you're able to smoothly connect them, how to flow, how you flow between them, how you transition from one to the next. That will make you look sexy. That will make you look confident. So what I want you to pay attention to is what movements you're using and what you're doing after. Let's say I want to do something sexy, like, um, again, let's do a hip roll. I'm not going to hip roll and then all of a sudden two step because it doesn't make sense. Or I've seen people doing something basic, they're grooving or they're bouncing around in the club and then body roll. What? What I would do instead is, let's see, body roll, hip roll, then I'll switch to any other hip movement I know so, so I can keep everything smooth and sexy and kind of the same style. And only after I'm done with some of those movements, I would switch to maybe some footwork. That gives us more context. That makes sense. The movements go together with each other. And this is how I would suggest that you practice. If you're learning, let's say on YouTube, a lot of the times those movements in the tutorials, they are not connected. The teacher may not be connecting them for you. You still should practice transitioning between different moves. So um, see which movements flow together, which are similar to each other, experiment with them and practice all of that at home so that when you go out, you're prepared because when you're dancing, whether it's in the club, at a party, at a wedding, you won't be doing just a separate move and then stopping, everything has to flow. So work on it at home. Making sure that you have a variety of movements that you can use, but also being comfortable to use them on the dance floor is what I teach inside my online program, Confidence Through Dance. In just a few months, you can go from a person who's avoiding dancing in social settings to a person that has the skills such as rhythm, coordination, ability to improvise, and who has the confidence to actually show those dance skills on the dance floor so you can thrive in those social situations. You can join thousands of students who learn with my method in the past 16 years. Um, I will post some of their before and after transformations below this video so you can check them out. And also below this video, you'll find the link where you can book our free consultation so that we can talk about your dance goals and see how I can help you inside my confidence through dance online program. Let me know if you enjoyed this video, if you like this type of movement, if you want me to create more tutorials just like this one. So if you liked it, click the like button, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell to be notified whenever I post anything new, and I will see you in my next tutorial. Bye guys.